Ratchet Live Theatre is a modern, live, on-stage variety show for the whole family. This year, enjoy the old-time black and white minstrel show favourites, a show not to be missed. A cast of over 70 youngsters from Sunraysia will treat you to a night of entertainment you will never forget. Laugh at our funny sketches by the Electric Light Theatre at the Mildura Arts Centre Theatre on February the 5th, 6th and 7th, including a matinee on Saturday. Bookings can be made at Hamilton's Jewellers in 8th Street, Mildura, and credit cards are most welcome. So great entertainment for us lucky people up here. And that will be happening very soon with the Electric Light Theatre's latest production. To tell us all about it, the producer and director of the show, Mike Saunders. Mike, it doesn't seem 12 months since you were in here last. No, it certainly doesn't. And Electric Light Theatre's back again with a team of youngsters ready to entertain everybody in Sunrise here. Bigger and brighter, or as big and bright as last year's show? Yes, we've got an extra two items that we've put in the show that we didn't have last year, and uh, we think we've got some top-class entertainment for everyone who comes along. You've had some of the, uh, the cast and crew away to, uh, to Melbourne, I believe. Yes, we went down to uh, meet with the production team from Young Talent Time and we've brought back a lot of good ideas that they gave us and uh, we're trying them some, out, some of them out on stage and uh, we do hope they work. Are we allowed to divulge anything to the, uh, the viewing audience tonight with that? Oh yes, um, we're concerned with some new techniques with scenery construction that haven't been tried up here before using materials that uh, we wouldn't have thought possible to use. Uh, so we hope that everyone enjoys what we come up with. There's always plenty to learn in this entertainment game, isn't there, Mike? Yeah, well, uh, the cast are learning from us and uh, we're learning from everybody else around us. So, yeah, there's a lot to be learned. You've got a big weekend coming up, uh, full rehearsal at Lake Cullullerain. Yes, we're taking the whole cast out to Lake Cullullerain and uh, we'll do a concentrated effort of uh, learning all the routines in the show and at the same time the children will be able to enjoy themselves and have a bit of a swim and get to know one another. You find that's good for a camaraderie in the show? It's essential before you go into theatre for everybody to get to know one another so that we work together as a team. It's not only the uh, cast on stage but the technical crew. Everybody is like one big happy family and that's the way it must be if everybody's to enjoy themselves. I agree with you entirely. How many kids you got in the show this year? We've got 65 on stage but behind the scenes you'll see many others or you won't see very many really but they'll be behind the scenes working. We'll probably have another 30 or so doing backstage jobs. You had quite a few young ones last year. What's your youngest age? Well, our youngest would be just on eight. That's pretty young to I get started. I remember one little fellow last year was most impressive. He, he really enjoyed himself. That's the main thing, that the kids are out there enjoying themselves. That's what we want to get across. If they're enjoying themselves, well, then I'm sure the audience watching the show will be enjoying it too. Any main theme for the show this year? Are you advertising the, the, the black and white minstrel yep. face on television there? That's right. The, the black and white minstrel show, you and I both remember when we were kids say a black and white minstrel show often came on the radio and was before the days of television and they had the old uh, Mr Interlocutor and Sambo and Bones and all their corny gag lines well they're all there together with the song and dance routines that were so famous in the old black and white minstrel days. Some great comedy sketches in your show last year too. Yes well we've got the adventures of Robin Hood coming up uh, this time and I don't know that's quite the way that the original Robin Hood story was told but it was sure a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at the commercial you've got running on television, you have some footage there from last year's show. Some of those costumes were really quite dazzling. Have they been made or purchased or hired? Or? Well, uh, the, particularly the nice looking costumes, the sparkling silver ones that we've hired from Adelaide. And uh, while it costs a little bit of money to do this, it certainly brings sparkle to your show and it makes it look good. Well, I, I have to endorse that because one thing I felt your show was last year was bright. It was very, very colourful. It was, it was very good entertainment. Well, we've got uh, the idea that we want to, to push variety and, and push brightness, push entertainment, and so that everyone goes home feeling they've had a good night out. I guess we'd better get around to telling people where and when, Mike. Quite true. Uh, our bookings are available from Hamilton's in 8th Street in Mildura. We've got a special family deal. If uh, you can bring your family along, uh, we've got a special family price going. Uh, the performances uh, opening night is on Thursday the 5th and then Friday and uh, two shows on Saturday, a matinee at 2pm and an evening performance at 8. And bookings kicking off quite well you were saying before? The bookings are uh, going quite well, yes, uh, particularly the Thursday night, opening night starting to sell quite well and we anticipate it, as in other years we'll probably have good seats available at the door too. Right, well we hope it gets to the stage where you don't have seats available at the door. Yes, well we might even sell out, we That's hope right. we do. One thing we should do, encouraging the people too Mike, is to, is to book not to expect seats at the door. That happened in a recent production and there were none left. 
We want people to get along and see the shows. This is right, and what's more, they can often miss the vital minutes at the beginning of it through waiting to get tickets. That's right. Mike, thanks for coming in, and we wish you every success, as always, with the ELT. Thanks very much, and we look forward to seeing you all. Thank you. My guest tonight from the Electric Light Theatre, great show, good family entertainment all around. Mike Saunders, thanks, Mike. That's all from me tonight. Thanks for being with us. See you next week. <laughs>
Uh, uh, look, uh, sorry, fellas, because uh, a slight technical problem. Uh, look, uh, look, the tape's been chewed up, and uh, you'll have to do it uh, live. <laughs>
tonight. When each one comes on, I want you to give them a nice round of applause. Let's try one, shall we? Screen seat belts and padded seats. You, you ride a motorbike, perhaps? I used to. I was a bikey until they bought in crash helmets. Then it became too tame for you. Naturally. Well, I must be going now. Another appointment, Sir Frank? No, I just can't stand talking to insignificant people like you. Good evening. Well. Bizarre. 
If you stand still, I'll take your measurements to work out a suitable cage size. Incidentally, do you like bananas? Help! Help! Is it my turn yet? No, go away! Oh, oh I say. What a fine specimen. <laughs> How did a 5th century physicist get into the 20th century? Well, you see, I was pillaging the Roman Empire. And I met this strange man, who invited me into his telephone box. Come on up, girl. Get a grip on yourself. Think of your lovely contract. Good evening. Maya, come on. Uh, yes, of course. You look rather pale. Are you feeling all right? I think so. Would you like to sit down? Mm, thank you. <laughs> You're nervous about being in front of an audience, aren't you? Of course not. I'm an interviewer. Mm. 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 Ackroyd. Mm? I'm Arthur Ackroyd. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Ackroyd. Well, uh, aren't you going to interview me? Oh. Oh, yes, of course. I am sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Mr. Arthur Ackroyd? Well done. <laughs> it's nice to meet someone who does something normal for a change. Normal? Yes, I mean, coins are ordinary and safe and... You're not eating them, are you? I'm sorry. That was rude of me. Please have some. Oh, you're not really eating them. These are 1984 dollar coins. They're very tasty. It's the nickel, you know. Oh, I get it. These are lolly coins. They're real. Actually. But you can't eat money. Why not? I've done it all my life. What I mean is, it's not the sort of thing Normal people do. Don't they? What a pity. There's something wrong here. Actually, I'm trying to get some pennies. They were good after dinner mints. The copper, you know. This is preposterous. I used to work in the museum, <laughs> but I was fired because I couldn't resist having a go at the ropes and shekels. It wasn't worth it, really. Now, if it had been Egyptian copper... You're mad! I'm mad! Everybody's... Dear, I suppose it's the strain of the rat race that drives them up the wall. Well, uh, I guess I'm in charge here. Now then, uh, who's next?
sent out here to fill in. Uh, almost invariably in a show of this type, a situation occurs where there's a problem with scenery changes and the like. Producing a suitable item is often very difficult and frustrating, and that's where a fill-in is needed. Uh, many a production team has been reduced to a mass of gibbering humanity with the stresses involved in creating such an item. And Now look, I didn't come out here to be insulted. Oh, where do you usually go? Uh, <clears throat> now, you, look, you can't go around shouting at me. Why don't you sit down and go to sleep like the rest of the audience? Well, give us a song then. Come on. Strike up or whatever it is you do. But, sir, as I've been trying to explain, we don't have anything new to do for a fill-in this year. Hey, give us a lovely. Hey, God, I care. I'm from Queensland. Queensland, ah. <laughs> Queensland, eh? Welcome to Australia. <laughs> What's the difference between Queensland and yogurt? Yogurt has an active culture. No, oh, really, what time does it go off? Look, I've had enough of this. I'm going to give you a bunch of fire. Now, sir, control yourself. <laughs> and now for the next item. Saturday, the regular crowd shuffles in. There's an old man sitting next to me, making love to his tonic and gin. Says, son, can you play me a memory? I'm not really sure how it goes, but it's sad and it's sweet, and I knew it complete. When I wore a younger man's clothes La da 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 de La da 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 de La da da la de Sing us a song, you're the piano man Sing us a song It's a pretty good crowd for a Saturday And the manager gives me a smile Cause he knows that it's me they've been coming to see To forget about life for a while The piano sounds like a carnival And the microphone smells like a beer And they sit at the bar my jar and say, man, what are you doing here? 
la da 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 de la da 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 de la da da You're trying to say, Miffy. You're trying to say, yes, Marsha, I really am a person. Ah, Yuck! Look, what it really means is, put me down, you great galah. I want to go catch a mouse. Yeah. 
They're pathetic, aren't they? Absolutely hopeless. Oh, and what about that chicken one? Oh, no. Hell's bells. This cat's calmly sitting there, about to have a feed, and all of a sudden this chicken springs up out of the bowl. Oh, but not an ordinary no. chicken. No, it's a chicken made up of bite-sized chicken morsels. Waltzing around the kitchen. His dinner's possessed by the devil, and what does this cat do? Nothing. Sits there and watches. What? <laughs> I'd be at the door like a shot. Find a church, find a priest. Look, well, he's got to be drugged or something. We should report that to the RSPCA. Yeah, and another thing, whenever you're just finished eating, they pick you up for a nice squeeze or a hug. Yeah, then they wonder why we chunder all over the floor. <laughs> well, Ben, I've got to get going. I've got a busy schedule today. What, uh, hosting a talk show, perhaps, or...? Oh, designing 40-storey office blocks, or composing violin concertos? No, no, none of that today. My sketching from 9 to 9.30, budgie tormenting from 9.30 to 11, and caterwauling from then on. Oh, it's busy, busy, busy. Yeah, I'll see you, Phil. Not a bit. It's the same for me, you know, always on the go. Work, work, work. You know, it's a dog's life, isn't it, hey? <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the famous Black and White Minstrel Show. Enjoy our beautiful dancing girls. Sing along with our Minstrel Show songs. Laugh at the antics of those clowns of the Minstrel stage, Sambo and Bone. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. The entire company presents that old-time favourite, Swanee. Sing along, won't you? I've been away from you a long time I never thought I'd miss you so Somehow I feel your love was real Me, you, I want to be The birds are singing, it's a song time The band is strumming soft and low I know that you yearn for me too Swanee, you're calling me Swanee how I love you, how I love you, my dear old Swanee. I give the world to be among the folks in D-I-X-I, even though my mammy's waiting for me, praying for me down by the Swanee. The folks up north will see me no more when I go to the Swanee shore.
ladies and gentlemen, you sang so well. I'm sure you'll all be in the cast next year. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the part. Mr. Interlocutor, I say, Mr. Interlocutor. Sambo! I hear you haven't been well lately. Well, yes, I haven't been eating so well at all. Did you see a doctor? Yes, I went to see a doctor, and he gave me some whiskey and pills. He told me to take a pill and a little whiskey three times a day. And uh, did you follow his instructions? Well, Mr. Interlocutor, I can't say. As near as I can figure out, I'm about three weeks behind on the pills. Six months ahead on the whiskey. Ha, ha, ha. Hello, Bones. Hi there, Mr. Interlocutor. Tell me, Bones. What do you think of girls? Well, I think the girls are the most biased creatures I've ever seen. How do you make that out? Well, all they ever say is, bias this and bias that. <laughs> Well, Bones, on your salary, they will not be biased for very long. And now a big hand for our guest artists, the Melody Sisters, as they sing a simple melody. Can avoid it. 
So it's goodbye, shooter, and I'll have to go Where the rain don't fall and the wind don't blow And your Ulster coat you will not need When you ride in the chair in the morning But your golden slippers must be nice and clean And your age must be just sweet sixteen And your white kid gloves you will have to wear When you ride in the chair in the morning Oh, them golden slippers Oh, them golden slippers, them golden slippers I'm going to wear Cause they look so neat Oh, them golden slippers Oh, them golden slippers, them golden slippers I'm going to wear to walk the golden street Them golden slippers, oh See you driving a car last week? Yes, Mr. Delagata, you did. But I can't drive anymore. But Bones, you only just got your license. Why can't you drive now? They took my license away for speeding down the middle of the road. You were caught speeding down the middle of the road? Yes, Mr. Delagata. I was only doing as I was told. Who gave you the idea of speeding down the middle of the road? When I got my license, it said, tear along dotted line. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, no. What about you, Sambo? Don't you know that when you drive, you should always give half of the road to a woman driver? I always do, when I find out which half of the road she wants. <laughs> I say, Sambo, I believe you've found a way to eliminate friction in your car. Yes, I never take my wife with me. <laughs> I can feel another song coming on. Yes, Bones, the black and white minstrel show proudly presents Miss Trixie Brown, who will sing Ma, he's making eyes at me.
I'm going to wake him up. She wants to marry me. Be my honey bee. My maiden with resistance, I shall holler for assistance, ma. She's kissing me. Come on, Sambo, stop your moaning and tell me why you're crying. I say, didn't you hear about the awful accident? No, I didn't hear about the awful accident. What happened? A big steamboat went up the river and the boiler busted and everybody got drowned. Boy, it was awful. Terrible. Was your wife on the boat? No, but it was awful. You lost a brother, perhaps? No, but it was really awful. Did you lose your mother or your father? No, but it was really, really awful. Well, you don't seem to have lost any of your family in the accident. What are you crying about? I'm crying because my mother-in-law missed the boat. Ha, ha, ha! Mr. Bones, you certainly look as though you're enjoying good health. I certainly am, Mr. Interlocutor, and I owe it to taking a cold shower in the morning. How long have you been doing that? I start tomorrow. Ha, ha, ha. I really am my physique to go. When did you play last? I played today. I love to play golf. How did you do? I broke 80. That's a lot of sticks to break in one day. Ha, ha, ha. Well, Bones, if nothing else, golf has given us some of the world's best liars. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the finale of our show, the Black and White Minstrel Show, proudly presents the all-time favorite, My Mammy.
very strange and funny. Her grandfather died and left to her his property and money. And when the will, it was read out, they told us straight and flat, if she was to have the money, she must wear the hat. Where did she get that hat? Where did she get that hat? Couple of swells, we stop at the best hotels, but we prefer the country far away from the city smell. We're a couple of sports, the pride of the tennis courts. In June, July, and August, we look cute when we're dressed in shorts. of currency we'd open up the safe but we forgot where we put the key we're the favorite lads of the girls in the picture ads we'd like to tell you who we kissed last night but we can't be cads Give up, 
Mr. Pressman, here's some news. You can print it if you choose, just to show that times have changed a lot. Though it may sound strange to you, it is absolutely true. You can believe it or not. Since Megan will be, became all the rage. Stephen got into the old bird cage. My canary has circles under his eyes. He used to whistle the prisoner's song. Now he does snake hips the whole day long. My canary has circles under his eyes. His only friend is the meadow lark, just a tiny sparrow. But I'm afraid when he's in the park, he leaves the straight and narrow. I raised this bird in a manner so strict, now I feel certain I'm being tricked. My canary has circles under his eyes. Became of a rage. Stephen got into the old bird cage. My canary has circles under his eyes. He used to whistle the prisoner's song. Now he does snake hips the whole day long. My canary has circles under his eyes. Just a tiny sparrow But I'm afraid when he's in the park He leaves the straight and narrow Since Megan Whoopi became on the rage Stephen got into the old bird cage My canary has circles under his eyes I could solve some mysteries too Yeah, bandstand, Disneyland Growing up fast Drinking on a fake ID Yeah, roam around the jungle He's everyone's Kawana And only 
jazz musicians are smoking marijuana, yeah. I wish I had a pencil and mustache, and I could solve some mysteries too. If you're not 
gonna leave, Louie. I'm a gonna have to use my Milky Bar gun on you. It don't kill you. It just fills you full of cleanness, niceness, and white. How's that possible? It gets in like liquid gets into chalk. <laughs> Right, kid, so it won't work. Now I'm gonna fill you full of lead. A stranger! You better believe it, Pilgrim. <laughs>
who can take the sunrise, sprinkle it with you, cover it in chocolate and a miracle or two. The candy man, the candy man can, the candy man can, cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Take a rainbow, wrap it in a sign, soak it in the sun and make a strawberry lemon pie. The candy man, the candy man can, the candy man can, cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. heritage was the story of Robin Hood. His name was famous throughout the land as the rogue who robbed from the rich and gave to the poor. Rather like the tax man today. The difference being that they were on the wrong side of the law. Tonight ELT will relay some of the better parts of this story. Now I'll pay ye attention. <coughs> now ye children Time for us to continue our lessons. Where did we get to last meeting? He told us that the evil sheriff of Nottingham, the tyrant who kept the English people poor while made his friends get rich. He told us of the time Robin won the great archery contest. And of the time he carried Robin across the street and had him carried back. Wait a minute. Someone's missing. I knew it. Mojo's missing again. He's always sneaking off and hiding in the forest. Has anyone seen Mojo? All right. Everyone spread out and we'll look for it. <coughs> this is no good. We can't find him in the thick forest by ourselves. We need a lot of people to help us. I know. What about them? Well, I don't know. They don't look very bright. <laughs> All right, now listen out there. It's time you got into the search. Have you seen a little boy? All dressed in green. It matches the forest, you know. Anyway, he's off again. 
Has anyone seen him? Are you sure? and take out your reading book. You'll never survive to fight the evil sheriff of Nottingham. in Sherwood Forest. So what can we do for the Sheriff of Nottingham? Don't be Robin. I'll have you stand for a crime against the state. I don't think so, Sheriff. You see, I'm not the criminal. No, Sheriff, you are the criminal. When the poor people of my parish cannot pay your cruel taxes, you have them thrown in jail. Well, Sheriff, I think we'll teach you a lesson. Keep it. 
for Mojo. Perhaps I was wrong. It appears that you've accidentally found the sheriff's tax collection. We have robbed the richest man in all England. We have robbed the rich to give to the poor. You're wrong, Robert. I robbed the richest man in England, and I'm giving it all to me.
Yankee-Doodle, Yankee-Doodle joy. Yankee-Doodle went to drum just to ride the ponies. I am a Yankee-Doodle boy. I'm a Yankee-Doodle dandy. A Yankee-Doodle do or die. A real-life nephew of my Uncle Sam. I was born on the 4th of July. I've got the Yankee-Doodle dream. She's my Yankee-Doodle, Yankee-Doodle joy. The Yankee-Doodle went to drum just to ride the ponies. I am a Yankee-Doodle boy.